we're now going to consider relativistic force. But before we do that, let's just have a brief discussion about mass. So we've seen that our equation for relativistic momentum can be written as P is equal to mv divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared. Now, you'll see some textbooks define a relativistic mass. So they will write m relativistic is equal to mo, where mo stands for the rest mass divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared on c squared. Now, personally, I prefer not to write it this way, as mass is technically the amount of matter which is contained within an object. And this does not vary with the speed. So the relativistic mass is actually related to more to the object's energy than to the amount of mass it has. So I think it's more useful to think about the momentum changing as the speed increases as described by our momentum equation rather than thinking about the mass of the object changing. So let's get on to force now. When we're considering force, it's useful to use Newton's second law. And we know that one of the postulates of special relativity is that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. So in the non-relativistic case, we can write Newton's second law as F is equal to MA, which is equal to M times dV dt which, if we're assuming that mass doesn't change, is equal to dmv dt, which is equal to dp dt. Well, it turns out in the relativistic case, we just use f is equal to dp dt as our definition of force, which is consistent with Newton's second law. So let's consider what would happen if we tried using f equals ma in the relativistic case. Imagine that we applied a constant force to an object over a very long period of time. Well, in that case, F is equal to MA. So with a constant force, we're going to get a constant acceleration. So this object will just keep on speeding up and speeding up and speeding up. And as we keep on applying the same force, it will speed up more and more and more until eventually it's going to get to the speed of light but nothing but photons can travel at the speed of light. So then we've got a problem. Now in the relativistic case, if we imagine applying a constant force, we've now got that the force is equal to d dt of mv divided by the square root of one minus v squared on c squared. Now as we get faster and faster, the denominator, the square root of one minus v squared on c squared, gets closer and closer to zero. And as we divide by a really small number, we end up with a really big number. So this is telling us that we need to put in more and more force to increase the momentum and hence the speed as we get to these higher speeds. So there's an asymptote when the velocity is c, then we've got a zero on the bottom of that equation there. So that is actually telling us that nothing which has mass can actually get to c. To get it to c, we would have to apply an infinite amount of force.